All right, this is the uh, final episode of the... Of refretting the uh, $900 Stratocaster. Right. <laughs> Lean the camera up here. Okay. I'm going to string this guitar. I, I'm, I'm still amazed at my age how many people I meet that are even older than me that still have never learned how to lock a string. So don't put that light there. That have never learned how to lock a string into a guitar. Okay? Okay, and what's this locking it, it's device? It's just silly. Okay? Uh, the guitar just won't stay in tune unless they're locked. Stratocaster shouldn't have these tuning keys anyway, but this is a very cheap guitar, so it has these tuning keys. If it's a regular Stratocaster, you would take your string, okay, and you would measure on the bass string maybe one to one and a half keys away in front of this key, okay, and you would bend that string there at a tight 90 degree angle. You would stick that in the slot in the top and wind the string and it's automatically locked. But this isn't. This has keys like a Gibson, okay? These are the ones you have to learn how to lock. All right. Okay. So, special. Yeah. Technique. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the same thing. One and a half away should be right for this guitar. Line the hole up this way. Okay. Put the key through. If you are uh, to, uh, stringing a Gibson, there's a key on the other side. You come in that way on that one, and you come around this way. Okay. With this one, with the keys on this side of the neck. It's hard to work with that camera, right? Right. I can't lean over where I want to. Okay, now catch this, Michelle. Thumb hits, that's the thumb I measured from, right? Mm -hmm. Stop, right there. Take this string, bend it around, take these two fingers, grab it out from under here, pull that string tight over there, pull the string down here. You can manhandle the string, okay? Because you have to to really, and pull the slack out while you're doing this. So you kind of put it like a See knot what I'm at doing? the end of it. You don't have to do this if you're gonna sit around and screw with it for, uh, you know, till all the slippage is gone, but if you're stringing a guitar, for somebody who's playing up there, right? You know, you, you, you want to get used to pulling the slack out of it while you're doing it, okay? And then I grab my cutters, and with my cutters on, on this end, obviously, I pull up a little bit right there and get them, get that slack out and then snip that string. That string is going nowhere. Once I stretch this string out, it will not go out of tune because it's locked. Look in there. That string is locked, the back wind. There's no way that string can go out of tune, okay? Is that why when you take the your guitar out me, of the box, you say they're still the in guy tune? Who, yeah, the guy who brought me this guitar to work on when I just took the strings off it, they were just so... I mean, I couldn't play the guitar for five minutes because I bend a lot and stuff like that. And, and I know he does too, so he must just fight with his guitars. But, um, you know, I try to show everybody the best I can how to lock the strings because, because if you don't learn that, you'll always be fighting with your guitar. These are... Whatever he brought me, don't go getting the idea that's my famous brand or anything. Now, from this string onward, I'll measure two keys, okay? I'll go here, I'll measure two keys away, okay? Um, for sakes of you knowing, I'll set the hole so it goes straight across again, okay? But I'll only do that one more time for you, all right? So you can see it coming straight in. Stop at the thumb underneath, grab these two fingers, Grab that string up and over, pull this down, make sure that stays over. Okay, that's that's what's going to initiate the lock. Wind down. Now, if I knew this guitar well, I would have done one key away on that string, but it'll still be okay. So you'd prefer to have less slack when you start? No, the, uh, I've got, I would have, if I strung this guitar every time it needed to be strung, I would learn and on this guitar that needs a little less space. Um, it's not going to amount to a hill of beans, it's still down on the bottom, but just what I would do. Okay, look out, i got to stand back here. How to lock the strings. So what we're going to do in this video is, is, is string this guitar, and I'm going to do what we'll call the setup okay and um, um, the the but of course like every step I've showed you here along the way of this particular fret job I didn't spend the entire time of each step so you can imagine how long a fret job really takes because you know you You're see me install you the first four frets you know and then and then picture how long that took the rest of the day and the leveling I sort of rushed through to get it all in a, in a timely video and I had to go obviously go back over it and stuff like that so um, 
so you know you look at frets and you say oh look it, you know it's 21 little shiny steel things can you change those for me and and now but now you have a, a good idea of how much work is involved in that because of the foolishness of how frets are designed to work okay. and that they don't have a, a retrofit product for the refretting right. available right. that There's you're aware the, of and and just the whole thing this is a very old school craftsmanship the basic fundamental construction of a guitar so um you know so on and so forth and, 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 and i think i'm doing a pretty good job of showing you the important tips of the steps involved now there were a couple of things you mentioned that you thought you might go back over because they maybe not have got yeah didn't get mentioned and first or... off again every fret job is different this is a 900 dollars guitar look it's not even painted on the back okay it's black on the back it's got some ridiculous electronics in it um it's a working tool for this guy right so a guy like this says i need the whatever this model is i don't even know fretted can you get it done i'm on uh, you know i got I, i'm off for two weeks and i'm back on the road and i tell him yeah and he goes well, give me give me a price well i pretty much know this guitar and i know you know from seeing him use it so i know what was going to entail and i know that this isn't even lacquer and blah 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 and all that stuff right so this is a 900 dollars guitar so I, I gotta keep the fret job at the at the bottom level of fret job price, right? So I'm not gonna refinish the neck. I'm not gonna plane the neck because first of all, there were no problems in it anyway. Um, if this was a, a a guitar more like if this was a guitar more like one I'll show you right now, then I would approach it completely different. Now here's my. Here's my main guitar right here, okay? It looks vaguely similar. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a very large neck. Um, this I, I built this guitar somewhere 10, 12 years ago. I can't even remember. Um, get close on those frets. I know you got a stainless fret. No, not at an angle. Just come straight on and look okay. at them, okay? You'll see the finish is starting to wear off in places here. Um, I do not keep long fingernails. I do not destroy fingerboards. When I play, these are stainless steel frets. I haven't even broken the crowning away in 12 years. Okay, and I'm a very heavy-handed. Um, yeah, you squeeze. No, I'm not a squeezer, but I, I hammer on and I and, and my vibrato is big and wide. And and um, check and out these the big ends. Big strings too, See? right? Okay, and and I do. These are 11s. I use big strings. Stainless frets sound really good and they last really good. This is a cleated, uh, brand new fret jaw because I don't have to cleat the wire when I build this neck because I put the exact size slot so the fret works the way it was intended to. So okay? this isn't a refret, this is... No, that, this is the original frets I put in 12 years when ago when, built, I built, originally built that when I built this guitar from scratch. And it looks okay. like brand new. Yeah, except for you can see lacquer wearing through in, yeah. in certain places, which so, is okay. I can't really see, I mean, you, you know, look hard to see it. Yep, I mean, I take care of this guitar, I don't bang it up, but it's not a, it's not a beauty queen. Uh, because I use it, I, this is my main guitar. I, this is the guitar I reach for it's when I want queen. my best one. Okay, but so that's a different that's a different thing there. Now, if if that didn't have stainless in it, and a guy brought that for a refret, I'd be doing some lacquer work on it. Okay, but I want to show you something. If you remember when I filed those ends, okay, come right up here, Michelle. All right. Did I even take any finish off? If if I did, it ain't but a sixty fourth of an inch, say from here, not even that to this top edge of the neck you can't even see it okay probably makes it feel better. so don't leave sloppy ends on your fretwork if you nip some finish so what it's a $900 guitar and all you did was smooth it out here anyway so it feels better you want these clean fret ends you see I see a lot of guys are afraid to file those ends and all it leaves is a sharp mess for the guy playing the guitar and it just looks bad okay so do you, you don't want to do that other problems with this guitar would be Okay, so I'm going to do the, the bottom level price-wise of the fret job, I'm, so I'm not going to plane it, and it didn't really need it, but, you know, there's some soft spots in it where, where there'll be slightly a deeper fret, maybe under the B string or somewhere on a particular fret that planing would have got. Um, you do that with the leveling, right? So you, you try to get it out in the leveling, which was no problem on this, especially since I know he wanted me to take a lot off these frets anyway. So um, the other He's thing squeezer. is is you, you're gonna wind up saying, okay, well, you're gonna damage the finish a little bit. This isn't even lacquer. This stuff, I don't know what this stuff is, some kind of vinyl, something or other, but 
um, you might have an area like this. Put the camera right here, Michelle. You know, I can see this because I got 2.0 glasses on right now. The camera will probably pick it up, but but if I pull my glasses up, I mean, I, looking close, and my eyes are pretty good, you really don't see that. Another thing you, you'd see that, I have to put it under a certain light to see it, so I doubt I'm going to be able to find it for you on the camera. But sometimes you'll get some fine, crazing, cracking from this way or that way of the fret pressing in on whatever this finish is, okay? But it's it's very minimal, and and to save the guy all that money from all that work that didn't need to be done to the guitar, nobody's going to care, okay? Now on, What's that little metal thing sticking up there? That's a string tree. String tree. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, these are all what you cook. Guitar comes in, you're going to fret it. You got to think about it. How am I going to fret this guitar? What process am I going to use? Has it been fretted before? The ends pounded over. Is, is the edge of the neck destroyed? You know, um, all these little things. And then you got to give the guy an estimate to determining on on all that stuff you are or are not. Does it need a nut job? Do. Does it need a nut? Is a nut included in the price? Okay. What kind of nut? Yeah, um, and, and and so on and so forth. You know, when someone gives you a price, ask him. Is you know, is that nut included? You know, and, and and if it is, and he's charging the same amount as if you brought a guitar in just to get a nut, yeah, I don't do that. I, I charge extra for the nut, but not a full nut price, because the guitar's already a part. Well, yeah. <laughs> I gotta set it up anyway. So you it's an I mean? like an add-on price. Right, so just because you have a price list doesn't mean, oh, nut is this much. You know, it's, it's you know, it's, you know, that kind of thing. And the one that gets me the worst is when I see somebody's price list and they charge you for the setup after a fret job. How can you not what put is it together? Uh, yeah, it just doesn't that. make sense. It's like part what you're of, doing now? Yeah, and all this of, of, of all the adjustments and everything. And like I say, by the time this video is over, it's going to be far from, I'm going to be working on this thing for at least another hour after this video is over, fine tuning the neck adjustment and, and the bridge saddles and, and, and the intonation and all that. I'm not going to do that in this video. It's, it's just so much stuff. What I basically want to show you is cutting these nut slots now to adjustment, okay? That's basically okay. So after you get the strings on, then now you have to cut the nut more. That, and that's the, the 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 main part. I want to make sure you understand in this video. The rest of it you can pick up on your own. Now, okay. what about the issue that you mentioned uh, previously? If um, say uh, they had adjusted the cutters on for the spacing of the frets properly or, or recently at the factory, and they might be off. You can measure yeah. for that. Give me a minute and I'll talk to you about that. Okay. And then there was also the issue of there's a lip on the bottom of that thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ooh, that I just want a rough tuning on this. Just one rough tuning on the thing. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna wind up cranking on that neck a little bit, but I'm not gonna waste your time with it right now. I'm gonna tighten that rod a little bit. Cleated fret job, neck still a little loose. Okay, all this. Oh, you're gonna bow the neck back? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't ever see that. It's nice. So now the slots are a bit high, okay? But since I've been doing this so long, I know about right where to cut the top of the nut. This nut won't have to be cut again, okay? All I'll have to do is adjust these slots. You might Don't get frustrated if it takes you a bunch of times to figure that out, you know? Like, or so a bunch just, of years, for that matter. You just scoot it over and now you're yeah. gonna grind down into it. Here, look at the Of course, I would set up my lights over here normally, but I'm not. I'm, I'm going to set them up before I do the final cut on these, which is not what's happening right now. I'm bringing them right into the ballpark. Now, do I use some sort of measurement? Even for people that know me for a long time will ask me now and then, "What's your favorite action at the twelfth fret?" On what? I mean. Uh, what guitar? What's the what 12th kind of, fret? You know, like right there. You know, like like they, they read online that there's some sort of 
magic Magical. measurement there that you oh, should be striving yeah, yeah. for. And, all right, I don't do any some of that. Some kind of okay. Some kind of. I use my feel. Transition. I play there. the guitar. I look at it with my eyes. Okay, I can see this radius. When I look across this and I start cutting these slots, I can see that I'm following this nine and a half inch radius. I don't need a tool for that. Okay. They make all kind of. Again, tools, I right? told you that before that there's lots of guys that do good work and all use different methods to do it and different tools. There's one guy um, quite famous that uh, is somehow affiliated, I don't know if he owns it or is affiliated with a company that has been selling these tools for a long time. And when I watch his videos, it cracks me up because I think, oh my God, I wonder if he's using all these tools just to sell them to you. You know, and then, but he's not, believe me, he's not, because he's I know guys that. like him. He's one of those guys that loves tools and loves to use a whole lot of tools that maybe you really didn't need, you know, which is fine, you know. I mean, if you someone do, else might prefer just stone knives and bear stones. Well, it's a guitar. I mean, it, it only needs, it only needs to act like a guitar and work like a guitar. Okay, now you can see this is tedious. You loosen the string down every time, okay? And you take it down in steps until you're where you want to be. Another thing you probably noticed if you bothered to waste your time watching all these videos. If they didn't watch the other ones, in this probably series, pretty confused at this point. Then, yeah, don't waste your time just watching this one. Go back, stop now, and go back. Okay, but um, but if, if 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 you've been watching them, you'll notice that I work really fast. I'm capable of working very fast. I've worked in very very uh, high pressure shops with a lot of that. Um, I never rush a guitar ever. If somebody says I got to have my guitar tomorrow and I can't do it, I tell them to pound sand. There's no way I'm rushing a guitar. Okay, but I just physically work fast because I've done it so much, okay? And on top of that, you've seen how long it takes you to watch these videos without me even... Doing it all. Doing it completely. Like, I'm not even going to do this nut. I'm going to be coming back doing more on this nut after I decide to stop. The video. Always tune your strings back up so that that distance here from the nut to the first fret is, is proper, okay? And... Basically, if you tune, if a guy tunes down a whole step or a half step, it's not going to make much of a difference there from a whole from from that. Um, and you pretty much know what people do. Some of them do, some of them don't. I know. So you start I'm, with the bigger strings and get them down in there. That's my fish. method. I, I start so I can look over the top of that radius, and and I'm also doing that. What I explained to you before, I'm tilting the radius this way. These strings are going to be higher than these strings. Someone hands me a guitar and go, oh, you like my setup. It's such and such 30 seconds evenly, you know, and I play it and I go, oh, the bass strings are just a mess. I, I, I can't stand the sound of it. it. It's like, you know, your bass strings are too low. But they're, they're exactly, so what? They need to be higher than these strings, you know. Just so because, was, like the bottom of that string, with that string, the, this string moves bigger. It, it vibrates more. So that it, it guitar doesn't feel right unless those strings are a little, a little taller. But you don't want an ugly thing where it goes like that, you know. So what you do is you take the radius of the neck, you have that radius, and then you tilt that radius. Okay, you do that on the bridge too, and the guitar will feel really good. These are all little things that I, I usually don't tell people when they pick and up their guitar and go, "How come it?" For a left when they say, "How guitar? how come it feels so good?" Yeah, don't worry about working on left-handed guitars. I've been in this business a long time. You know how many left-handed guitars I've had a chance to work on? How many? Very few. Five? <laughs> no, a lot more than five, but I'm just saying it's not, it's not, it, it, and it does bother you still because it's like the guitar is, looks wrong. It looks backwards, you know? And, uh, um, and then m most of the left-handed guitars I get to work on are guys that are actual <laughs> southpaws that play, just turn a regular guitar upside down, you know? So then you just have to do it set up weird? Um, no, those are the best because I can turn, I can turn the guitar back over and play it. <laughs> it it's strung exactly right for me. 
So you you seeing what I'm doing here? I'm at the D now. I'm moving to the D, and I'm just cutting this using my eyes to um, to see from down here to see this radius to watch this radius come over. And these are going to come down some more, okay? But I don't bring them all the way down till I let the guitar sit for a few hours or overnight, and I do the final straighten out on the neck, okay? Um, depending on how this guitar, every guitar is different. Depending on how this guitar sounds, how clean it sounds at a good action, and that's not referring to the frets, okay? That's referring to the wood and the vibration and of everything in the guitar, okay? So. So you're gonna let it like equalize overnight or something to settle into its new configuration? Before I do the final, Before very you... final cut on this nut, this guitar will sit. So you have to be careful not to take too much off now. Exactly, because this neck, I know this neck's gonna be straightened. And when this neck is straightened. Because the strings are gonna pull it. Yeah, and when this neck is straightened, the strings are gonna get closer to the first fret. Okay, it's just the way it works. So you don't want to come, and as you can see, I'm dead on with how much space I want. Okay, because this is going to come down a tiny bit more. That nut is not engulfing the strings. But it's, and it's not too got short. A good little divot for them to sit in from. Well, it's going to take you a while to come to that ability. Um, on some of these you don't have to like when you get to the G string and the D string you don't have to tune it down every time are those special files just for that or are they just files that are small? Uh, these are files I got a long time ago um, they're exact whatever thousands that is I have to measure it to tell you but I, I have it marked uh, for a G string and that would be for a set of 10s 11s or 9s I wouldn't change the size for 9s I don't do many guitars at all that have 9s on them I almost don't even see them anymore. Um, it's usually 11s, 12s, 13s, 11s, and 10s. And for 12s and 13s, I have a lot of my guitars set up with 13s. Very few with 12s. I go from 11 to 13s. That would be the jump for me. And uh, so, and most people, I also notice go from if they don't use an 11 I, I don't see them use a 12 much although I know a couple of people that do but most people go all the way up to the 13s and on a lot of my slide guitars that's what I find to be the you way like to go big strings. now the factory nut on this guitar the strings were so low and I don't like that most people don't um, people that do I don't understand what they're playing anyway they're playing so soft and and uh, they never get aggressive with the guitar obviously because if those strings are that close I don't know how you're gonna get aggressive with the guitar so one more string and you'll have seen the whole thing so the hardest part is learning to bring your eyes across that nut and see that but it's really not hard I mean it's the thing is, is if you want to start buying 500,000 tools to do the simplest job in the world, like I see these guys sell a tool to pull a stud out of a Les Paul. I mean, what's wrong with a friggin' claw hammer and a block of wood? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that since I was like 15 mm -hmm. years old. It works. It never chips anything. It never breaks anything. Okay. And uh, I mean, I like tools. I've got a lot of toolboxes and a lot of tools. Um, I got tools all over the place toolboxes and, and uh, mm -hmm. but I, I don't like buying a tool that ingenuity gets around just as easy it doesn't save any time that tool the tool doesn't make you any more money um, takes up space gets lost yeah gets th then then it's just sort of a tool that that makes no sense to me you know at that point okay that's nice now I'm gonna bring that e-string in You can use saws on these. Um, I've always favored this saw on a 10 or 11 gauge string. Okay, 
and uh, so again you got to decide what your installation or frets what your your theory is going to be okay these frets were designed to slide in from the side so that I put that fret wire away probably so that those barbs cut a groove this way and that way under the surface of the top of the neck and they cut into the sides and they will press down and shot in from the side okay and kind of like a dovetail solid, sort of thing solid i mean you take a a, a, a a vintage fender and you try to get those frets are in so solid and so tight there's no backbone neck um even old les pauls and all those vintage gibsons they're pounded they're in there solid if you want to glue your frets down start cutting your tangs away all those techniques you see where people gluing the frets down with either epoxy or super glue um then you're gonna you're gonna have to learn from somebody other than me because i just don't feel that that's a good sounding fret job okay i mean this is listen to that you know i mean this it sounds very resonant that, that that's that's like tapping that piece of wood except there's metal added to it it's it's just going to resonate the guitar like incredibly well so if you're holding your fret down and using some sort of glue and waiting for that glue to flash off and dry and then letting that go because if you didn't right the fret would come up somewhere Spring in up. the middle or the ends then what really what is that i i don't get that it's not how the fret was designed to work okay so i can't shoot them in from the side because the guitar's already been fretted okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna remake the tang so that i can pound them in from the top and they're as tight as they were when they were originally put in from the side but nobody respects that anymore the guitars aren't made like that anymore they're made with looser slots the slots are looser and wider okay and they're dropped in and super glued and they hold that press you saw me use in the earlier one they, they those guys hold the press down wick the glue in wait or they use fish glue some guys use hide glue or whatever but glue fish that glue. literally sticks the fret down okay then they let go and then that's done and I just don't I don't like that now when I use an alphabetic resin glue like I was using on this fret job that fret job is cleated what's holding that fret in is the fret okay and then that glue dries hard around the fret sealing off any air gaps because I'm not I can't control how deep the slots were cut in the factory and I don't want that slot through there I don't want to look under this guitar you see a space here right there's spaces under every one of these frets because these frets are these slots are deeper than my frets, but not much. And you don't can't barely see them now. Why? Because my glue is dried under there, so it, it hides it. Okay. So the glue sort of the glue seals that filler. up. It seals that up. So when the you know damp air or moist air or anything really, should they shouldn't be there. So that's what the that glue is for. This glue that I use when I do a fret job, is in no way, shape, or form, used to glue the fret in. Okay. And another thing to go over is when you saw me using that press right the red uh, press yeah when I pull that press down okay and then put this much on it and all that glue squirted out that frets pretty well seated okay if you prepared it right and it's cleated and you look at it like I do and you see me take wipe the glue off and look at it I don't see any space under it and then I'll put it back in and I'll put some some muster on it okay what am I doing there I don't know I've just always done that I want to smash that 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 radius of that fret into the radius of that neck and stretch out any any imperfections in that piece of fret wire you Smush know the but glue it's into not the necessary if you're not if you don't feel you have the strength to push and, down and like don't that. forget if it has the notch over the end because i mean for years i've had you know repairing from i've had four shoulder surgeries in the past 10 years so there were times i could not push that press down like that and, and, and it doesn't affect the fret job what you saw me doing there that's more of just just a little extra overkill thing that I do right and you can't do that if the fret isn't seated tight because if you do you'll make it spring up by giving it that extra if the fret really isn't what's holding the fret in if it's the tang your glue or something holding? instead of the tang okay another thing Michelle keeps telling me to f not to forget to tell you guys that last fret is a lip in here okay so on I this did guitar on this guitar because this is a 22 fret I did not use the press for that because why because you can break that lip off it'll just snap right off okay so you got to learn to use a hammer all right so let me, go over the, now, let me go over the hammer thing one more time because you, you never saw me do it and I watch some videos online and see some just horrible hammer work okay so 
if that fret was cut to length and the and the tang was already prepared, right? And it goes, let's say it goes here and it was cut here, so it had okay. So you put that fret in here and you lightly tap each end so it's sitting there, okay? The neck would obviously be off. It'd be in a jig that I use that would look like like this. Let me show you. The neck would be this way on, on, on the bench, okay? Another one I'm building for myself. That neck would be this way on the bench, and it'd be in my jig where I slide this thing down that keeps support after the flat area, however the neck is shaped all the way down, okay? So it's in there. So that fret is sitting like that, okay? It's bent to the radius, all right? This is a little over bent for this because this is a 12 inch radius. I would never take that hammer, stand where I'm standing. Show no, I, I'm saying, okay. show the camera where I'm standing. Okay. Okay, so I'm standing here. I see guys just whack that and then whack the middle. And what What happened to the radius of the fret wire when you do that? Smushed it flat. You changed it, yeah. It's bent, it's all changed. So it's probably not even rounded. The way to properly hammer, like I did that 20 second fret on that guitar, is when that jig is set up, you're gonna have to move over there now, okay? I get over here, and of course I'm working back here. My jig is set into the bench back here, so I don't have to stretch my shoulders over so far to reach it, okay? But that'll be like that. I want to be behind the neck like this, okay? And then I go, right, across, and then back, then a little harder. And I'm what I'm watching is I'm watching that tang on the bottom disappear while this never changes, okay? That never changes until it's completely gone. Back and forth, and I'll, and I'll hit and I'll slide like this sometimes to make sure that I'm not gonna bend one area of that fret. And then when there's nothing but a hairline crack, then I can come up over it and go across it back and forth with some, some you know, heavy, heavy uh, uh, hits and check it out and, and it'll look perfect. But if you kink this and bend this while you're hammering that in, your ends are going to be up. It's just going to look like a mess. Okay. You've lost your curve on there. Yeah. And if, if somebody brings you a guitar like that to work on, you know, send them packing because, I mean, I saw a, a ridiculous video the other day on there. The, the guy, I don't know, I, I, I hate to, I'm, you know, don't. he seemed like a nice guy, but. Everybody seems Whoever nice worked sometimes. on this guitar, the first thing he said is, this guitar is a mess. Somebody brought me this guitar that it's a, has a brutal fret job on it. And he shows a close-up of it. And to the left and right of the frets, there's, and it's a maple neck, too. There's, like, no excuse for it. There's chunks of wood out you could eat cereal out of. I mean, you could put, you could pour Cheerios in there and milk and use a large tablespoon. I, I mean, there's, it's so bad. It's so brutal. And the ends Bob are sticking to exaggerate. up. The ends are sticking up here, you know. The middle's up I on saw this one, it. right? Well, he, he says he 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 shows how he's gonna level this guitar for the guy. You know, it's like ah, you know, get him in right. Don't ever do that to somebody's guitar or your own guitar. You know, just get get you know, learn how to put them in right. Well, what about the fret draw when someone says that they're guitar doesn't sound right, they want a new fret job, and then you measure it and you find out it's off from the factory. Uh, that's a good point. Okay. I've had a lot of guys bring me guitars, right? And and not I, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna correct that word a lot. A few guys, because most guys wouldn't even know if their guitar won't tune up. I, they just fight with the guitar. They don't like it, and they wind up selling it. But they don't really know why, because the harmonics don't sound right. It's because it's not in tune, okay? And they'll bring the guitar to me and say, you know, what the is wrong with this guitar? And you know, I'll, I'll first look at the knot and the bridge and, and uh, the, the major uh, um, things that could be causing the problem. And if I don't see a serious problem there, I'll go get my my measuring devices out and I'll measure those fret slots, okay? And they'll be off, like off bad. Like what's bad? Like the guitar, no, uh, let alone a classical guy playing it. A three chord rock banger can't play it. It's so out of tune. You know what I mean? And he'll go, well, it's a brand new guitar, it's from Fender. You know, and <clears throat> if you ever worked in one of these factories, which I have, 
what cuts those slots in a factory usually is something called a gang saw, okay? Cuts them all at the same time. It's got 21 or 22 little blades in it, all on a shaft with spacers in between those blades, okay? And that neck, on above that, there's an arm that swings